right, so we're going to go ahead and do the unboxing. This is the second locomotive that Athern has done in the special paint scheme, with the other one being the UP 1943. So we'll probably see it end up more with these special paint schemes in the special boxes, but here we go on the outside. We do have the classic Athern Genesis, and it kind of matches the paint scheme of the locomotive with the dueling ribbons and the red and the black. Then we do have the paramedic, police, and fire department logos here on the side. And then we'll go ahead and show you the image with the product number and a little picture of the locomotive. They got the nice LED logo, and then there's the price I paid. So, did only got the DCC only version. I felt that the Tsunami 2 was a little bit, uh, I have a few locomotives with it, and we'll see how uh, ESU upgrade is for that. So we got our Ather News pamphlet. We have a general Tsunami 2 owner's manual for diesels. We have a SD60E exploded parts diagram. So there's all the parts and the numbers and the different cab orientations. And then some more information up top. And we have the Genesis locomotive warranty and then the Horizon warranty. So I'm gonna pull the locomotive out of the box in that clamshell and nothing else is in the box. So we'll go ahead. So we got the two foam style um, at the top, these little plastic foams. We have the soft plastic at the top, and then we do have some soft plastic under the fuel tank. got another piece of foam right here protecting the handrails. We'll go ahead and flip the locomotive over. Uh, so first impressions, I don't see anything wrong with it. First time opening it up, so uh, nothing too crazy. But we'll go ahead and get this on the turntable and we'll do a quick detail analysis. All right, so we're gonna go over some of the details on this locomotive. We're gonna start off with the cab and just kind of work our way back and then we'll work around the, the rear side of the locomotive and then go ahead and hit the top and we should be pretty good to go. So we're gonna go ahead and start with the cab. One of the first things you can notice is this Admiral uh, Crescent cab that they came out with for the SD60Es. You can see it has the little eyebrow that sticks above the windows. And then on top we do have two grab irons. We got one that's a little bit funky but should be an easy fix. And we do have the windshield wipers. Um, and the etched metal look pretty good. We do have three grab irons on the top there, and then two sand filler hatches. Then we do have the grab irons down the, long, down the front of the locomotive, so you have access to the top of the, the cab. Uh, one of the things to notice is that the handrails, these yellow painted front handrails, are actually different styles. So we got this one that's almost straight vertical, and this other one is a little bit better contoured towards uh, the edge of the cab. Uh, one of the little things I did notice was there was a little bit of a paint issue on this door. You can see right here, must have been on the decaling process, just where the handrail kind of um, <clears throat> breaks up the decal and um, a little bit of white paint should fix that, so nothing major. And then we do have the front handrails and they are just plastic. They're molded in a red plastic and it matches pretty well. And these sides are painted yellow to match the rest of the locomotive. And then we do have the front ditch lights. And one of the really cool things I saw was these front ditch lights actually have a little decal like the prototype. And it's just a really tiny yellow decal. You can see it right there. I haven't actually gotten a magnifying glass out to check if it, you can actually see it. But it's one of those things that's so small, I wouldn't even worry about it. So looking at the front of the locomotive here, we do have this plow, looks pretty good. We do have the painted grab irons on the plow with the MU cables coming through. We do have an orange painted MU hose, which matches the prototype. It's a little bit dirty right now, so um, won't hold the to those higher standards, but we do have the coupler cut lever bar and they do have a touch of yellow paint um, on the edge right there. Then we do have the plastic scale McHenry coupler and that should do it for the front of the locomotive. Lots of detail packed into a, a little space, but other than that, it looks really good. 
Uh, we do have the see-through step ladders right there, and then we do have the tread on all the walkways. So that's something to look out for throughout the video. So we'll move the locomotive over here to the side. We do have the etch metal sunshade and the side mirrors. Uh, windows don't move, but not a huge issue for me. Had a little bit of an issue with the uh, paint right there, just because it was kind of separating on these, uh, these fans right there. So um, it's just kind of an invisible spot, but uh, there are a few little decals. So they kind of blend in, but that's just something to look for, out for on your model. So uh, next thing we got is uh, the speed recorder. You can see right there attached to that third truck on the front uh, coupler. And then we do have the electronic bell and the toilet drain right there. So we're gonna turn this locomotive to the side. And one of the really nice things about this is uh, that overall paint scheme. So it looks really nice. And I just think the colors are spot on. Uh, I thought the red was a little dark, but once I got it under a white light, it looks pretty good. So. It might look a little dark if your layout's not lit perfectly, but regardless, it looks still looks pretty good. Um, I couldn't really see any, you know, nicks in the paint or paint fade, but we'll give it a closer look before we go to the scoring. But overall, this is a great scheme and it's really sharp. So I'm pretty sure everyone will really enjoy it. All right, so uh, one of the first features about these SD60Es is this tapered dynamic brake intake. You can see that's one of the changes you had to make from the SD60Ms and the Is to this SD60E. And then we do have the air dryer right there. And then we do have like a, I think it's a little electronics cabinet um, in the Atherin manual. It's got an acronym that doesn't really mean anything to anybody, but. Um, and we do have, um, so this handrails are different from the regular, just the plain NS looks logo one because it has this little piece of plastic right there for the honoring um, honoring the first responders. So that's something to watch out for. Looks pretty good. And then we do have this air dryer right there, just another little, little detail. And there's tons of cables on the underside. So Athens really stepped up their game on their Genesis line. And I, I felt really good about purchasing this just because of the amount of detail that's you can see on the underside. So, um, so we'll continue on here to the back trying to think if we have anything else to add on the side. But um, one thing I will mention are these handrails. Um, so they're a little wonky, and that's what you're gonna get with plastic ones. So um, they're actually pretty wonky looking at the side here, but uh, that might be a huge issue for some people. For me, it's not terribly huge, but um, just, you know, you're probably gonna get some waviness with the plastic handrails. So we do have the treads all the way up and down. We do have the warning labels on this step right there, so a nice little feature. So now we're gonna work our way to the back here. We do have the handrail on the top. We got the lift rings, a sand filler hatch. We got the separate applied grab irons on both sides. So we got the full ladder right here and then the single one. The rear hand uh, hand uh, handrails, sorry about that. That was a struggle. Um, so they're molded in the red like the front ones and then painted on the sides with the yellow. And then once again, we do have the rear ditch lights because this is the Northfolk Southern unit with the tiny yellow decals that I really enjoy. Orange MU cables, um, MU cables, and they do have a grab iron around the MU cables, which I thought was really nice. And then we got the coupler heads, uh, the extras, and the coupler cut lever bar with the orange, with the yellow um, painted on the side. So overall, the back looks, back looks really good. Once again, Atherin's done a really good job of upping the detail from their Genesis line. So, you know, if you bought an SD60 a few years ago and you're not sure if you want this one, it's definitely an upgrade. So a lot of detail they've packed into a tiny locomotive. So a few things that we're gonna mention real quick about the SD60E um, is one of the differences between it and one of the differences between the E and the I's and the M's are these three little doors. They're extruded just a little bit. You probably won't ever notice it unless someone told you, but it's something to look out for. And then they do have this port with the window, and it's actually the clear, cl uh, clear acrylic right there. So just something else to look out for. Along the undersides, we got the cable junction boxes right there and right there. Just some more wiring details to look out for. And then we'll continue down. So uh, like I said, lots of detail on the underside, so you'll be pretty impressed with that. Uh, we mentioned the rearview min 
window and uh, sun shades. Uh, PTC uh, 10 array looked really good. Couldn't find any differences between that and the prototype. Um, they did a really nice job of having the contrasting orange gold color against the white without any issues, so I like that. Then we do have the dynamic brake exhaust right there. And one funny thing I kind of I kind of just laughed at was in the prototype photos I've seen, this is actually all red, so um, I don't know if Athern tried to um, have the underside painted a little bit different so you could see the depth, but uh, I think they cost themselves an extra few cents just because um, in the photos I've seen, this is all red and there's no distinguishment before between like any of the fan blades or the grill, but it's all just all red. So, and then we do have the dustbin hatch with that yellow painted 36 inch fan. Not that that's important. And then we do have the exhaust silencer behind that. And then we do have the, the ribbons moving up to the top where they fold around from the left side to the right side across the top. And then they separate the black paint from the red paint. And then we do have the Nathan K5 LA horn and then the 36 inch dynamic or the radiator fan. So we got three of them in the back. And then if you can barely see, we do have some lift rings. So that I think that's it. We covered a lot here, but um, can't think of anything else that we skipped, but overall a very nice locomotive, lots of detail, lots of little, um, lots of little things like the American flag and the, the trans care and all just the logos throughout the, the locomotive. So. Athern did a really nice job of taking this locomotive and putting it into reality for us. So we're going to go ahead and move on to the next section now. All right, guys, so we're going to go ahead and check out the lights here. This is the first locomotive I've owned from Athern that actually has the LEDs. So be an interesting experience for this. But we have put um, just a basic decoder in here just so we can, we're not filming around with the DC, the DC version. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to shut the lights off. We're going to check them on the front. And then we're going to swap it, check out the back, and then we'll go ahead and move on to the section. So what we're looking for is the headlights, number boards, and the ditch lights. So, All right, so there's the headlight, the ditch lights, and the number boards. So not a great focus by my camera, but we'll work through it. Um, so on camera, that actually looks pretty good. Um, but in person, a um, lot of issues. Uh, for one, on the ditch lights, um, they actually look pretty red from all the light bleed. So on the bottom of the ditch lights, a lot of light bleed. You can kind of see it in the video. And then if you're not looking, I mean, looking straight on, the ditch lights kind of have a red tint. And then um, actually looking down at like a 30 degree angle towards the ditch lights, they look pretty good lit up. But looking straight on, um, not very powerful. You know, looks like the LED isn't. Uh, situated and I'm pretty sure they used um, like a clear plastic to kind of throw the light up there so quite a bit of issues with that uh, number boards look pretty good I don't see any issues with that the headlights you know yeah definitely issues um, it, so it seems that the LEDs uh, we'll turn the light back on here real quick just so you can you know, can find a focus but it looks like the LED is right there um, between the number board and the headlight so you're only getting like a glimpse and you actually can see it pretty well with the light on how and if we shut the light off you can know but um so you know the leds aren't in there very good and the light looks pretty poor so we're gonna go ahead and, and check out the back and see if it has the same issues all right so we're on the back here uh ditch lights quite a bit issue this one is slanted down quite a bit um but going from the one that's at the normal height you got the same issues with the light bleed. Uh, the ditch lights look have a pretty good red tint to it. So that's something you might have to watch out for. Number boards uh, look all right. They were kind of a little bit of light bleed. Um, but what you're going to have is that's going to be an issue just because you don't have like a back, a black background on the numbers. You actually have a red one. So we'll flip the light on real quick. And you can see it's color matched where the ditch lights are. So it's actually supposed to be red. But... Um, you know, not a huge concern. And then the LEDs on the back, uh, they're golden white and they're just average. I would say the fitment's about 50%, could be better, not 100%. So, um, take that as you will. Um, one thing I will, uh, just kind of mention, 
So the locomotive is in the reverse direction right now, but you can't really see it, but the number boards on the front are lit as well. And that's just something, you know, you turn them on and both turn on. So i um, pretty sure that's just a CV adjustment, but just something I noticed right out of the box. But okay, so that's all I have for the detail analysis and we'll go ahead and move on to the next section. All right, so the next section we're gonna go over is the scoring of it, which is pretty subjective, but I know a lot of people enjoy it. It's one of the, my favorite things in a video. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw up all the point values. So the, they're not 100% equal. So like the details and the motor and electronics, those are the big ones for engines. Whereas some of the other stuff like the packaging and the accuracy and the couplers, um, they're not worth as much, but they're still important. So they still have a monetary value. So. First off is the packaging. Um, it's your uh, typical Atherin Genesis packaging. Nothing wrong with it. There's nothing I would really fix or change about it. So it gets a full five out of five. The accuracy on the model was actually really surprised that it does really well. The one thing I did see was on that dynamic exhaust fan, which um, it's not 100% right, but it makes it look better on the model than at the actual um, locomotive. Whereas if it was 100% correct, it would kind of look more toyish. So I'm not going to fault him on that. That was overall pretty good. So accuracy, you know, full five out of five. Uh, details, once again, you know, I really harped on it for about 10 minutes, but the details overall were really good. Uh, one thing I will say that um, other manufacturers have been able to produce is the roller bearing trucks. So scale trains and Intermountain have had these for out for a few years. So you really should start holding other manufacturers, especially if you're having a top tier line, you should really start moving towards that where the um, two manufacturers independently have proved that they can do this at a cost effective rate. So that's just something I think that this model should have. If you're going to charge a premium price, you should have the premium features on there. But overall details really good. I'm going to take off two points for the roller bearing trucks, but uh, the paint overall looks really nice. Didn't find a lot of voids or a lot of scratches. There was almost none. A few issues on the front with the paint on the door handle and on the sides. So I'll go ahead and throw up a photo so you can get a little bit better idea. Um, I am going to take a point off for that just because it's really difficult to paint those areas where the, um, the decals aren't really opaque and they see through. This is pretty prevalent on the back. So, um, you know, that's just something you can really see through the decals on a few parts and the paint is 100%. So you can't really fix it with, um, you know, regular paint. So. You know, just going to take off one point for that. Overall, beautiful scheme, really nicely done. The next section we're going to look at is the couplers and the wheels. So all the wheels were engaged. It's pretty standard by this point. If you don't have your wheels engaged, that's you've done something really wrong. But um, coupler height overall looked pretty good. Front was pretty good. Back one was a little bit low, so I'm going to take a point for that. And then the plastic couplers, um, once again, you're charging a, a premium price. And you're not putting pr uh, premium stuff on it. So in this day and age, you really need metal couplers. I know Atherin owns McHenry and they only have plastic couplers. But, you know, you should still have metal couplers on this. This is um, this is a huge issue. So, um, you know, I'm going to take a point for the low coupler and then a another point for the plastic coupler. Overall, the motor and electronics were pretty good. Motor was actually pretty good. So... Um, I took the weight down and compared it to a few other engines I owned. It wasn't as good as the Tier 4 Gevo, but from Scale Trains and Intermountain. But it did a lot better than some of my other heavier locomotives, which I was surprised at. So I have the MTH Gevo, and that was pretty heavy. But <clears throat> overall, um, looks pretty good. So I can throw the weights up there and compare it. And then pulling power is also pretty good. Um, electronics wise, you know, this is a DC only locomotive, so you can't really go test in electronics. And I mean, the Tsunami 2 is all fine for what it does, but it's not what I like. But, um, in terms of the electronics, I'm going to take about five points off for the lighting. So there's almost lights issues with every single light. There wasn't one I was really happy with, except for maybe the number boards on the front, but overall... Um, I'm really happy to see Atherin moving towards the LEDs, but they obviously still need to work on a few things, getting the execution right. So um, from what I've seen, it looks like they're not using nano LEDs, or they might be, but they're using plastic clear, clear plastic to kind of translate the light from the actual LED to where it needs to be, 
and it's just not translating well where you have pretty dull uh, ditch lights and headlights and so that's just something i think they need to work on uh, the value of locomotive it's pretty good there's a lot of detail i was actually really surprised at how much detail there was i thought this was just going to be like an sd60 clone from the earlier runs but i was really surprised at how much detail there was that being said, you know, we still have that higher tier price from what we're usually accustomed to. So usually it's about $300 and this is MS, MSRP of 310. So, you know, you're kind of getting up there into the really premium range. And especially on this next run where they're going to bump the price up another few bucks. Uh, I think they're going to bump it up another 20 or 30 bucks. So that's just getting into that era where you're getting, um, you're getting really expensive locomotives and you should start holding them to a higher um, a higher quality so um, i am going to take two points off i think um, just it's mostly for the next run which is going to be very highly priced and this one it's um it's just on the edge of okay i i probably wouldn't buy the tsunami 2 at that price but that's your decision on what decoder you want and what sounds you want so all right so for this last section the miscellaneous section we're just going to kind of uh, wrap it up overall it's a pretty good locomotive details are good accuracy is good uh, paint you know you had a few small issues everywhere but um, regardless it's a pretty good locomotive i am going to take one point away for the lighting because i just feel at a, at a locomotive at this price it shouldn't be have that poor of lighting but overall just going to take one point away from that this locomotive does receive a score of 87 which is about a b b plus in a school grading system which is overall really good. So pretty excited about that. So we're going to go ahead and, and wrap up our final thoughts here. We're going to move on to the conclusion section and just kind of draw everything together. And um, that should wrap things up, guys. So we'll go ahead and move on to the next section. All right, we're just going to wrap a few things up here. Uh, overall, very nice locomotive. I think anyone will be really happy with their purchase. I definitely am. It's a very nice looking locomotive, especially this 911 unit. But um, there are three other standard uh, North Folk Southern units that are available in this run. But overall, really good detail, really good uh, pulling power. A few issues with the lights and the paint, but um, you can probably look around that. But overall, definitely would recommend this to anyone, especially with the fact that they're upping the price on the next run. So MSRP on this, I think we mentioned this earlier, um, is about 310 for the DCC and sound version. And about 220 so i picked mine up for about 170 so definitely shop around you can find some pretty good discounts but overall very nice locomotive so tell me what you guys think and if you've purchased this so comment rate subscribe and we'll see you next time